What's up guys, AdventureDex here from AdventureDexOnline.com. In today's video, we're going to be checking out Rough Crunchy's new product, MLC6. So the MLC6 is Rough Crunchy's brand new product. It's a multi-light controller with six switches and a source that goes in the engine bay. This product is going to make it extremely easy for you guys who want to add accessories onto your Jeeps like lights and winches and those kind of items. It takes all of the wiring away. All you do is hook it up to the source and the switch is pre-wired. Man, I'm really excited to install this. Rough Country was kind enough to send over one to us so that we could do the installation and review so you guys can check it out before you buy. So the first thing we're going to unbox is the switches. So you'll see it here. This is comes in two boxes. One is the actual switch itself. And all of these switches are pre-wired. So everything is done. It's a plug and play system. This is going to go up above the, the rear view mirror. And this is going to bolt on. This wire is going to go down into the engine bay and it's going to connect to what some people call the source. Obviously that's the power cables, all of the zip ties and this here is what the power is going to be connected to. And these are six 40 amps, and you're going to connect every positive and negative terminal on here. And then this is going to distribute the power to the switches, and then you'll be able to control any kind of accessory you want from right here in the engine bay. This takes all of the confusion away from wiring. All of the relays and fuses are already here in this power distribution. This is going to go right in your engine bay. It makes everything incredibly easy. And uh, like I said, I'm really excited to, to get started on this installation. So we're inside the Jeep now and we're going to start the installation. The first step is to use a T20 Torx bit and remove the two bolts that are holding the sun visor in place. Next, we're going to remove the plastic screw that's holding in the trim on the A-pillar. All right, finally got it out. This thing is the biggest pain in the With that screw removed, you're not gonna pop everything down. This is gonna simply pop out of place. You can put that to one side, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the panel above the mirror. It pops out of place, and then you wanna take the wiring harness out for the mirror. So we'll leave that and put this there. The next step is to remove the two T25 Torx brick screws on the footman's loop. So the kit comes with two different brackets where you're going to mount your switches to. This bracket here is for the 2007 and 2008 Jeeps and this here is for the 2009 to 2016 Jeeps. And whichever Jeep you have obviously you're going to use the bracket which is associated with the year of your Jeep and that's because the footman's loop was moved over a little bit on the year so they provided both brackets so this obviously can fit all Jeeps 2007 to 2016. So that's real cool. We're going to use the 2009 to 2016 because I have a 2014 Wrangler. We're going to put this in place now and then we'll be able to mount the switches. So once you've selected the correct bracket for your Jeep, you're going to put the footman's loop back in with the bracket on the inside. Make sure you get the correct orientation. The longer side is going to be towards the passenger and the shorter side towards the driver. I'm going to hand tighten this and then tighten it down with the T. 25 torque. So 
So we're gonna put the header back in place now and you're gonna see that it's gonna interfere a little bit with this new bracket we put up. So there is gonna be some trimming necessary and you're gonna see we're gonna need to trim a little bit off of this side and a little bit off of that side. I'll mark it in a minute and then we'll get uh, the jigsaw out or a Dremel if you have one and just put a little slice on that so this could sit flush back into place. Once you've test fitted the upper panel that you've trimmed and you're satisfied that fits, you're gonna take the switches and the wiring harness and you're gonna connect those. Once those are connected, we can then put up the switches and the panel back and you're gonna have to do this at the same time. So it's a good idea to grab a, an extra pair of hands so you can line this up. And the reason is, is that you wanna fish this wire behind the panel at the same time as you clip it in place. Alright guys, so I took my old A-switch pillar off just to show you something. This is all the wiring in that goes into wiring these four switches. There's a constant, a negative, and a power to each one of these switches. This here is all the wiring that it takes to wire these new six switches. So this is going to be ran into the engine, plugged into the source, and I'm going to get rid of all of this garbage, and then plugged it in, put each light into the source, and then all the switches work. If this is confusing to you, then this is the solution. Once you get the wire down and through the firewall, you're gonna remove these three 10 millimeter bolts. Now that we have these bolts removed it and this wire, this wiring harness ran, I've got the positive and negative that came in the kit. We're gonna run this over to the battery, route it back here, and then plug everything into the source. Before reattaching the source, make sure that you feed the wires through. Don't clip them in as yet. We'll do that in a minute. Once we have them through, we're gonna attach this onto the bolts where we took it off. and we could just tighten this back down. So you wanna put the black on the GND and the red on the VIN, and then you wanna plug in obviously the wire harness for the switches into its location. And then we can connect this up to the battery, hook some accessories up, and see how it works. Okay, so we have it hooked up to the battery. Everything is wired. The kit even comes with, uh, with these terminals that allows you to plug into the positive and negative of each light and slide it in. For demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use this 20 inch that I have lying around. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug, push the positive and negative wires into the switch. And then we'll go and test the switch and make sure that, uh, that it works. And, sh and so you guys can see. So to initialize the system, you gotta turn the Jeep on once.
you should hear it click and then you'll see all the lights come on on the switches. You can then turn it off and it works every time. Let's test our temporary connection. So we got everything wired up and this is all the wire we took out of the A-pillar switch pod just for four lights. That's absolutely crazy. So all of that is away and this simple box right here is where everything is wired up to. This makes the job incredibly simple. I can't tell you the amount of messages I get about relays and positive and negative wires and people are confused of which way they go. This takes all of those concerns away. So let me give you my initial thoughts on this product. After going through the entire installation, I'm really impressed. It's definitely a DIY installation that you could do at home in your garage. There's a couple of features about this product that I think you should know. One is that it comes with six 40 amp relays and six 30 amp fuses. And so what that means is, is that you can run a multitude of different variety of lights, accessories on this and you're not gonna have to worry about the ampage and the power being strong enough to hold it. The MLC6 also has a low power cutoff. So that means if you leave one of the switches on or you forget and the battery isn't on or the engine isn't running, this will actually cut off that power to that accessory so your battery won't die. Let's also talk about probably the number one comment I'm getting it on this video and how does this compare to the S-Pod. So I've never personally owned an S-Pod so I can't speak from an ownership standpoint but what I can say is that from doing research there's a couple differences. One is huge to me and that's the price point. I've looked at getting an S-Pod for a while and one of the reasons I haven't is because they're quite pricey. The S-Pods that I were looking at were somewhere from between six to $800. You can get this product right now, link below for $199. That's incredible guys. There's only two things that I would change about this product. One, I'm not a huge fan of having to cut that plastic trim even though it was a very easy thing to do. And two, I wish you had the options of picking the colors of the LED lights on the interior so they're not always blue. I would like to have them red. Otherwise, I love this product. I think if you're looking for an affordable switch pod, this is the way to go. Rough Country is a reliable brand and they also offer a warranty on all their products. Comment below and let me know what you would wire to your MLC6. I have one switch left on my switch pod. What do you think I should wire up? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up rating. And don't forget to subscribe for weekly Jeep videos. As always, I'm Adventure Dex. Don't forget, keep on Jeeping.